Welcome back. So we're talking about neural networks. Uh, we've explored some of the architecture, some of the kind of uh, reasons why we can train such powerful neural networks today, uh, some of the applications and where it's going. And now I really think it's important to lay out some cautionary tales, some caveats for neural networks. Um, now I'm really torn. I, I think that there's a lot of hype around neural networks. Um, unfortunately, and fortunately, it's, it's a great thing that they're so easy to train, but that also means that uh, I think a lot of people are training them without really knowing what's going on and how to kind of validate their models um, and things like that. So uh, I, I have this kind of mixed feeling of great optimism. There's a lot going on that, you know, there's a lot of evidence that neural networks are powerful and will continue to be a major, major part of the machine learning movement for, for years to come, uh, a central part. But I also think that there are major cautions uh, that you have to keep in mind, especially when you apply these neural networks to physical systems, to uh, systems where human lives and safety are at risk, automation. And I mean, it's happening. So, so we need to have this discussion and, and I'm gonna be just as brutal as I can so that we all are kind of talking about the major burning challenges that we have in making and improving neural networks. So this is not kind of supposed to be a criticism of neural networks, but I want to get us focused on the fact that there are key issues that need ongoing development. And there's, there's hundreds of people uh, you know, working on these, and that's, in, that's encouraging, so us included. Okay, one of the first issues in neural networks that I'll point out is overfitting. Okay, it's easy with this very expressive architecture, it has so many degrees of freedom. It's kind of an over-parameterized system, if you will. That's nice in the sense that it's good for training uh, and, and has this flexibility of expression, but there's also the potential for overfitting. You can overfit your neural network with all of these knobs and bells and whistles to your training data in a way that it might not necessarily generalize uh, as, as well as you would like to the future. So this is, again, a really important reason to cross-validate your data. Um, and in some applications, in many applications, uh, overfitting is not necessarily an issue or something you have to be concerned about because the past data is very representative of the future. In fact, everything I'll see in the future uh, you know, is either an interpolation or has analogs in, in my previous training data. And so as long as I cross-validate my model, I will be fine. I'll have good high performance. And in fact, those are the applications where neural networks have typically really um, you know, shined is where you have huge, vast data sets that do generalize very well to what you expect to see in the future. Okay? And I've heard a great analogy before with overfitting. Um, professional athletes. In some sense, there are certain applications where you want to overfit. If you have an uh, you know, NFL linebacker, you want them to be overfit for their job. You don't want them to be good at other, uh, other things. You want them to be just super good at what they do and overfit. So maybe they're incredibly, you know, the peak of their uh, you know, physical specimen for what they do, but maybe they would have a hard time hiking up uh, a mountain that my kids could hike up. I don't know. Um, but you know, there's this idea that maybe overfitting is not bad. Maybe what you want, if you're a company and you're trying to get 1% better performance because that's millions or billions of dollars of profit, maybe you want your model to be kind of overfit as long as your past data is representative of your future. So I'm abusing this term a little bit. Overfitting is generally a bad thing, but there's some scenarios where if your training data is rich enough and generalizes to the future, then as long as you cross-validate, you know, you're, you're going to have good models uh, for the future. So another thing I think is really important for neural networks, and again, this was in our general topic on machine learning, these are also important, is generalizability. And this is something that, in general, neural networks tend to struggle with. So um, it's hard to learn physics. It's hard to learn Newton's second law. You know, if I show you cannonball trajectories, that's great, but it's hard to learn something that will generalize to building a rocket and putting a human on the moon or in outer space. Okay, so neural networks are great if you've shown it what it's going to be modeling in the future, if, if you give it a bunch of cannonball trajectories, it'll perfectly predict cannonball trajectories. 
but extracting out that generalizable knowledge, that F equals MA kind of knowledge, that in general is, is pretty tough. And the examples that do it are super impressive. And, uh, and I think this is where a lot of development is going because you're going to be putting these neural networks in autonomous systems. They need a little bit more of a rich and subtle and, and kind of abstract understanding about the physics of the world that they live in. Uh, in addition, there is this idea of interpretability and explainability. So again, these neural networks might have millions, tens of millions of parameters of degrees of freedom, which makes them very expressive, but that also makes it sometimes very hard to interpret um, what the neural network's actually doing. Some architectures are more interpretable than others. There's some ways in which we're getting good at interpreting neural networks, but in general, they still kind of have this, this feeling of being a big, black box that's a little bit opaque and hard to, hard to really see how the, the gears are working inside. And with this increased push for explainable machine learning and explainable AI, um, you know, it's, it's really important that we can understand and tell other humans how these algorithms are making decisions or, or the algorithm should be explaining itself. That's important. Uh, and then another area, this is kind of near and dear to my heart, is this idea that as an engineer and as a scientist, I'm not just working with image classification, dogs and cats, or, or speech recognition. I, I work in a world where we know physics. We know that energy is conserved and mass is conserved. We know that there are symmetries and all of these interesting laws that we've, you know, hundreds of years of human knowledge, we shouldn't be throwing this away just because there is a powerful new architecture. We would love to be able to bake in and incorporate some of that partial physical knowledge uh, into these neural networks. We'd love to be able to take data and learn new physics. Um, and I don't mean this actually in just neural networks. This is true for machine learning in general. We'd love to be able to figure out how to incorporate partially known physics and extract unknown and new physics. Um, maybe there is a physics of how disease spreads or a physics of the stock market. And we'd like to be able to understand those the same way we understand F equals MA. And we'd like to be able to incorporate our partial knowledge um, in, into those, those models. And in general, that's, these are challenges with all machine learning methods, but I think these are actually particularly challenging in neural networks. Uh, but because of how powerful and expressive and, and the, just the incredible technological advances that have been made because of neural networks, these are especially important uh, to, to learn how to incorporate uh, into neural network architectures. The good news is lots of great people are working on this. Um, you all should work on this. It's really, really uh, vital and pressing, especially if we're going to have you know, self-driving cars and autonomy and robots. And you know, if we ever want to get towards, you know, from kind of human-guided learning into a less human-guided learning kind of artificial intelligence, we're going to need to have generalizability and interpretable, explainable, teachable uh, machine learning that incorporates physics and pulls out new understanding that, uh, that, that can translate. Okay, thank you.